Shadow Slave. By Guilty Three. Chapter 94 Battle in the Depths. Because he wanted to. For once, Sonny's heart wasn't full of fear and despair. Instead, it was filled with defiant indignation. He was tired of bending under the pressure of the world, furtively clutching to the tiniest glimmers of hope, always afraid, always willing to do anything, abandon anything, just to survive for another day. It wasn't enough anymore. He wanted to make the world bend to his wishes instead. He wanted to live like a human being instead of an animal. In these past months, Sonny had changed without even noticing. Somehow, he had grown unsatisfied with his previous way of life, one where his sole goal of survival at all cost overshadowed everything else. Whether he lives or dies had always been the only thing that mattered. But now, how he lived mattered more. What was the point of having no master if he lived like a slave? Gritting his teeth, Sonny dove into the dark abyss. The cold water embraced him like a burial shroud. He couldn't see in this cursed blackness, relying only on his shadow sense for guidance. Salt sipped into the bite marks on his hands and the cut on his neck, making them burn. Not paying the agony any attention, Sonny used his considerable strength to propel himself deeper and deeper into the darkness. He could feel the giant tentacles moving in the water around him, pulling the pieces of the carapace boat into the gargantuan maw that was hiding somewhere far below. Once or twice, he had to desperately twist his body to avoid being touched by one of them. But still, no sign of Cassie. His lungs were starting to burn. Sonny dove deeper. At this depth, the water pressure was starting to affect his movements, making each stroke feel heavier. Even with his body enhanced by the shadow, there was a limit to how much it could withstand. Sonny suspected that without the blood weave, he would have suffocated a long time ago. What's worse, he felt as though he was getting closer and closer to the actual body of the unknown horror that had destroyed their vessel. He still couldn't sense its massive shape, but judging by the girth of the tentacles that surrounded him, the monster couldn't have been far. And then, Sonny finally noticed something. A short distance away from him, a small shadow was struggling against a much larger and ferocious one. Cassie. Gathering all his strength, Sonny swam toward the blind girl with as much speed as he could muster. As he drew near, he could discern the details of what was happening. Cassie was being pulled down, a smaller tentacle coiled around her body. She was still struggling, trying to get free, but her movements were growing weaker with each second. She was suffocating. Filled with fury, Sonny propelled himself forward and grabbed onto the tentacle, feeling slippery flesh throbbing in his grip. If he had any choice, he would have avoided touching that thing at all costs. But fighting underwater was tricky. If he wanted to deliver any sort of a powerful blow, he had to find some form of support first. Summoning the Midnight Shard, Sonny strained every muscle in his body and slashed across the tentacle, right below the point where it was coiled around Cassie's lower torso. He knew that he wouldn't be able to do any serious harm with that strike, which was slowed down to a crawl by the burdensome resistance of the black water. However, his amazing sword was still sharp enough to cut into the fleshy tentacle, causing a cloud of dark blood to gush out of the wound. The tentacle furiously twitched and shot sideways, as though trying to shake the attacker off. Flying through the darkness, Sonny held on for dear life and moved his blade upward, slicing the spongy flesh apart. He never hoped to chop the tentacle off with one strike. No amount of strength would have allowed that to happen. Luckily, swords were able to pierce, slash and cut. Pushing the blade, Sonny cut deep into the tentacle. When the Tsubo was about to touch the wound, he changed his grip and pulled the Tachi down. Monster's flesh spread apart under the razor-sharp blade, barely offering any resistance. A torrent of blood surged out, and with the last push, the tentacle was completely severed. Sonny was finally able to turn his attention to Cassie to see how she was doing. What he sensed made him scowl. The blind girl was barely conscious. He needed to get her to the surface as fast as possible. Pushing away the twitching remains of the tentacle, Sonny dismissed his sword and grabbed Cassie across the torso, feeling how cold her skin was through the thin fabric of her tunic. Weakly, she tried to resist, not realizing that it was him and not the monster. Pressing the blind girl to his chest, Sonny turned his head up and felt a wave of desperation crashing against the walls of his mind. His lungs were in agony, no air whatsoever left in them. His body was slowly losing its strength, full of terrible pain and thirsting for a breath of fresh air with maddening intensity. Even if he could see anything, at this point, 
his vision would have begun to darken. And they were so, so far away from the surface. What's worse, the horror of the depths was now alerted to his location. Countless tentacles were already moving, surrounding them in an impenetrable barrier of flesh. A second or two later, they would be crushed to death in the devastating embrace of the sea monster. Sonny didn't know how to save them. But he wasn't going to give up, no matter what. Making an arduous stroke with his one free hand, he held tightly onto Cassie and swam up. The tentacles were approaching, blocking all paths of escape. Sonny gritted his teeth and... In the next moment, the water around them suddenly turned pure white. An incandescent radiance filled a vast expanse of the cursed sea, obliterating any sign of darkness. The explosion of light was so intense that it pierced through Sonny's eyelids and hurt his eyes. It was as though a miniature sun had ignited somewhere far below them, turning the endless black abyss into a pristine white void. Tidal currents of radiant water surged tumultuously, throwing the world into disarray. The gargantuan tentacles convulsed and writhed madly, as though in the throes of unbearable pain. The unbreakable barrier of flesh fell apart. Sonny wasn't about to let this chance go. Straining his suffocating body, he swam to the surface, dodging the writhing tentacles. With the furious white sun burning in the depths below, he could see their shapes clearly. Moving faster and faster, he propelled himself up with everything he had left. Sonny knew that surfacing that fast was dangerous, but there was no other choice. Both Cassie and himself did not have a lot of life left in them. They needed air. Although it seemed like an eternity, the white radiance began to dim just a few moments later. But it didn't matter. Sonny was already past the barrier of tentacles, swimming up with desperate speed. He was afraid that they wouldn't make it. His consciousness was already beginning to wane, slowly slipping into the cold clutches of empty nothingness. Even knowing that there was nothing but water around, he was still overwhelmed by the suicidal desire to open his mouth and inhale as deeply as he could. His muscles were spasming, devoid of oxygen for too long. And then, finally, Sonny's head broke the surface. Blinded by pain, he drew in a gasping breath and coughed uncontrollably. Held tightly in his arms, Cassie was doing the same. Her chest was ruggedly moving up and down, sucking in the sweet ambrosia of air. Sonny never knew how precious it was before, not even while being slowly poisoned by the harmful, polluted air of the outskirts. They made it. Trying to compose himself, Sonny looked around. The last remnants of the white radiance were long gone, erased as if they had never existed. The world was once again consumed by absolute darkness. However, far away in the east, the first light of dawn was about to shine from beyond the horizon. Catching the glimpse of the giant stone hand, Sonny gripped Cassie's shoulders and swam in that direction. Chapter 95, Starlight Sonny felt that he was at the end of his rope. He had put himself through too much abuse during these last few days. Now, it was hard to even remember when was the last time he had slept. A day before climbing the soul-devouring tree in search of a special fruit, perhaps. Since then, he had lived through the harrowing torture of the blood weave transformation, spent countless hours on the verge of mental collapse to resist the effects of the enthrallment, mangled his hands to stay lucid, guided the boat through the terrors of the dark sea in absolute darkness, saw it being destroyed by the horrid dweller of the deep, and gave battle to that monster in the cold black depths, almost drowning as the result. His body and mind were on the brink of shutting off. Despite that, Sonny stubbornly continued to swim, bringing himself and Cassie closer and closer to the giant stone hand that was rising from the water, as though trying to embrace the skies. The dark sea was surging around him, still reeling from the effects of the light explosion that had rocked it some time earlier. Tall waves were threatening to drown the two sleepers, throwing them around like toys. Struggling against them was a hard task. And still, he persisted. The dawn was drawing close, but for now, there was still nothing but cold, darkness and danger all around them. Any second, something could rise from the depths of the abyss and put an end to their desperate attempt to save themselves. At least the tentacles were gone, perhaps scared away by the pain of being exposed to the searing light. By some miracle, Sonny eventually managed to reach the stone hand. Hoisting Cassie up, he helped her climb on the dark rocks and followed closely behind. Soon, they reached the open palm of the hand and crawled to its center, then fell down, utterly spent and exhausted. For a long time, neither of them was able to talk. All Sonny could do was lay motionless, draw in raspy breaths, and try to stay awake. His mind was empty of thoughts. 
that was fine, because he didn't want to think. If he did, he would be forced to remember. Remember what had happened to. Shut up. What was the point of remembering? He couldn't change anything. The sound of the black water crashing against the base of the giant hand reminded him that the night was still not over. Opening his eyes, Sonny tried to understand their current circumstances. Their shelter was slightly raised above the waves, the base of the giant thumb almost touching the surface of the dark sea. The palm was not very spacious, roughly half the size of the circular platform that had saved his life on his first day on the forgotten shore. It was angled upward, creating a slight slope. The fingers were higher above waves and wide enough to accommodate a person, but they were bent upward toward the sky, making them less suitable to serve as a refuge. We need to get further away from the water. With that thought, Sonny tiredly stood up and bent down to touch Cassie's shoulder. Cassie. Stand up. We have to move higher. His voice sounded hollow and brittle. The blind girl flinched and raised her head, her skin deathly pale. Sonny. He nodded. Yeah. It's me. She was still in shock. Sonny could see that Cassie's mind was not all there yet, so he gently pulled her to her feet. Come on, let's go. It's just a few meters. She lingered. What happened? I heard a, a sound. And then something was pulling me down. He gritted his teeth and tried to keep his tone even. We were attacked by a sea monster. The boat was destroyed. I dove down and managed to find you, then swam to this pile of stones. It's not very high above the water, so. Cassie wavered. Where's? Where's? Sonny hurried to interrupt her, unwilling to answer the next question. Come, follow me. We can rest when we're higher. Gently guiding the blind girl, Sonny climbed to the base of the giant hand's index finger, which was the highest point they could reach without climbing the fingers themselves. Sitting down on the cold stone, he rested his back against the giant phalanx and stared at the restless surface of the dark sea. His eyes were cold and empty. Cassie was silent by his side. Her pale face was contorted, as though she simultaneously wanted to ask the question and dreaded the answer. Finally, gathering her courage, the blind girl whispered, her trembling voice barely audible, Sonny. Where is Neff? He stayed silent, not willing to speak the words out loud. Stupidly, he felt that if he spoke them, they would become the truth. But if he didn't, there was still a possibility that they were a lie. I'm not answering. A few moments later, the familiar pressure appeared in his mind. The pressure grew and grew, making his head spin. I'm not. Then, the piercing pain came. Sonny stubbornly endured it. He lasted for much longer than he had ever done before, keeping his mouth shut until hot tears rolled from his eyes, his whole body shaking from the terrible suffering. But eventually, he was still forced to say those bitter words. She's. She's G. Before he could finish, a subtle sound attracted his attention. It came from below, from the edges of the restless dark waves. Sonny's heart skipped a beat. Out there at the base of the giant thumb, where the cursed sea was almost touching its stone surface, a pale white hand appeared from the black water and grabbed onto the rocks. Then, a tall figure slowly pulled itself onto the open palm of the stone giantess. His eyes widened. Feeling that something was wrong, Cassie turned her head and asked, Sonny. What is it? He trembled and whispered, gripped with sorrow. It's Nephi's. An uncertain smile appeared on the blind girl's face. Neff. She is all right. Sonny found himself unable to answer. No, Nephi's was not all right. In fact, he didn't know how she was even alive. The Starlight Legion armor was shattered and torn, revealing the mutilated flesh beneath. There was a horrifying gaping wound on Changing Star's torso, looking as though almost half of her right side was missing. Sunny could see the sharp shards of broken ribs, the rivers of blood streaming down her legs, and the mangled mess of viscera spilling over the edges of the wound. He wanted to close his eyes. Another large chunk of flesh was missing from her thigh, exposing the shredded remnants of muscle and the white surface of the femur, cracked and barely holding together. Her right arm was severely damaged, too. In fact, it was almost torn off, hanging only by a narrow strip of skin and a few tendons, like that of a mistreated, broken marionette even her face was not spared. One of Neff's eyes was gone, its socket crushed and shattered, 
The skin of her cheek was shaved off as though by sandpaper, leaving behind a mangled mess of bleeding flesh and broken teeth. The sight of her was harrowing and heartbreaking. It was apparent that Changing Star was about to die. Sonny. Why are you not answering? He glanced at Cassie and bit his lip, trying once again to suppress the answer that was fighting its way out. Something sharp and hot was stabbing at his heart, making his vision blurry. Meanwhile, Nephi staggered and blindly stepped forward. Her legs buckled, and she heavily fell to her knees, splattering blood all other the cold surface of the stone. A terrible moan escaped from her lips as her cracked femur finally shattered, bone piercing through muscle and skin. Sonny felt as though he was thrown into his worst nightmare. He wanted to scream, but his voice was gone. A deep, almost physical pain was tearing him from inside. He didn't want to be here. He didn't want to see this. And yet, he couldn't look away. That's why he noticed instantly when two white flames ignited in Neff's eyes. The radiance grew brighter and brighter, spilling from her eyes, her mouth, the gaping wounds in her body. It was as though there was a flaming star burning in the place where her heart should have been, as though she was nothing but white flame hidden behind a thin layer of human skin. The incandescent radiance filled changing star's blood, turning it into streams of liquid white fire. As Sonny watched, frozen in place with his eyes opened wide, that fire began to melt and reshape her flesh. Slowly, her muscles repaired herself, her organs returned to their places, her bones reassembled themselves from the shards. Where there was nothing to replace a missing part, the fire took its shape and solidified. With a terrible scream, Nephi's grasped her almost severed arm and tore it away, then pressed it to the stump that was bleeding with white flame. Soon, the mangled halves melted together, becoming whole again. Shocked, he saw every terrible wound on her body heal, washed in the purifying fire. Soon, there was nothing but pristine white skin showing through the wide gaps in the shattered armor. Nephi's raised her head, looking at them but not seeing anything. There was no recognition in her gaze, all understanding destroyed by the cruel crucible of the sacred fire. Then the last daughter of the immortal flame clan closed her eyes and fell to the ground, losing consciousness. Finally, the first rays of sunshine appeared from beyond the eastern horizon. The dawn was coming. In the end, Nephi's had remained unconscious for an entire two days. On the third day, she finally opened her eyes and slowly rose, looking around with subtle confusion. Her face, as usual, was calm and indifferent. However, she did flinch a little when her gaze fell on Sonny, who was sitting at the top of the giant hand's index finger and grinning from ear to ear at her. Frowning, Changing Star looked herself over, noticing the embarrassing gaps in her armor, and said, Why are you smiling? Sunny gave her a mischievous wink and shrugged. Look behind you. Lingering for a few seconds, Neff sighed and turned around, wondering what is it that he wanted her to see. Behind her, a dark expanse of land was rising above the slope of the colossal crater. And on it, a tall city wall built of gray polished stone was towering over the giant chasm of the abyss. It looked ancient but still impenetrable, able to withstand the crushing pressure of the dark sea for a thousand more years, they've made it. That had found the human castle. End of Volume 1, Child of Shadows Chapter 96, Exile Wake up, sunless. Your nightmare is. Shut the hell up. Trying to remain in the blissful embrace of sleep, Sonny hissed through his teeth and stubbornly closed his eyes tighter. He was warm and comfortable under the blanket, on his own bed, where all the problems of the world seemed less serious and dire. For a moment, there was silence. That's better. Wake up, sunless. You're. God damn it. Thrusting one arm from under the blanket, Sonny summoned one of his memories. Immediately, a triangular leaf-shaped throwing dagger appeared in his hand, only to be thrown blindly at the source of the irritating voice. Missing its mark, the kunai clinked against the stone wall and fell to the floor. However, the voice did fall silent. Sonny sighed. It was already too late. He was awake. Far in the distance, the waves were starting to crash against the city wall. The night was coming, so it was time to get up. Opening his eyes, Sonny sat up and looked around. His room was beautiful and spacious. The stone walls were engraved with intricate patterns, creating an atmosphere of sanctity and elegance. The furniture was made out of pale polished wood, with several mismatched pieces that Sonny had scavenged from different places himself. The room had no windows, however, 
there were light wells cunningly hidden here and there. Sadly, the ingenious system of mirrors that was supposed to bathe the hidden chamber in sunlight was long destroyed, leaving only darkness inside. Sonny didn't mind. In fact, this was one of the features of his secret lair that he enjoyed the most. Darkness was his best friend. Yawning, he stood up and rubbed his face to chase away the last remnants of sleep. His long, dirty hair was getting in the way, so he moved it back. Let's make some breakfast. But first things first. Sonny moved his hand, pulling on the invisible string that connected his wrist to the ring-shaped pommel of the kunai. The throwing dagger jumped into the air and landed on his palm. This was a trick that had taken Sonny quite some time to master, in the beginning, he almost lost a couple of fingers while trying to learn how to control the flying blade. Walking over to a wall empty of engravings, he used the kunai to scratch a small line into the stone. All around it, there were dozens and dozens of similar lines, grouped neatly into sets of five. It had already been four months since Sonny came to this loathsome, godforsaken city. Many things had happened during that time. Cassie's vision turned out to be true. Far in the west, they indeed found a vast, ruined city surrounded by tall walls, with monsters wandering its narrow streets. And in the center of the city, there was a hill with a magnificent castle standing on its top. Miraculously, the castle was full of people. However, they weren't awakened, as the three of them had hoped. Instead, they were, each and every one of them, mere sleepers. Because they were no gateway in the castle. Hundreds of humans, those who had managed to survive the lethal hellscape of the forgotten shore due to their strength or luck, were stuck there with no hope of ever returning to the real world. It was nothing but a graveyard of hope. Remembering his first days in the castle, Sonny couldn't help but laugh out loud. Oh, what a fool he had been. So full of hope and newfound faith in humanity. Where's that faith now, huh? Laughing hysterically, he bent over and slapped his knees. Oh, that's funny. Good one, Sonny. What do you think about that, eh buddy? The shadow didn't respond, staring at him with reproach. Its silence only made Sonny laugh louder. He just couldn't stop. To be honest, he had gone a little bit insane some time ago. Probably around his third week of living alone in the city. He was more or less alright after leaving the castle due to that unfortunate falling out with. Well, it didn't matter. The point was that on his third week, that damn bastard of a knight had almost disemboweled him, leaving Sonny no choice but to crawl away while using his own two hands to stop his intestines from falling out. After finding his way to a secluded ditch and lying there for a few days, too weak to move and simply waiting to die, with not a soul around to help him, Sonny wasn't quite the same. Good times. Anyway, he survived. Dismissing the kunai, Sonny walked over to a table that he had scavenged from the ruins of a library and glanced at the grey rock that was lying in its center. No matter how you looked at it, it was just an ordinary rock. However, as soon as Sonny's gaze fell on it, the rock spoke, wake up, sunless. Your nightmare is over. That rock was, in fact, one of his most valuable memories. In all ways except for one, it was indeed just a rock. Which was already useful enough. There were a lot of things that someone as devious as Sonny could accomplish with the help of a rock. However, this particular rock was also capable of parroting different sounds, which made it simply priceless. Right now, it was parroting Sonny's own voice. Wake up. You vile thing. Struggling with the irrational desire to turn the parrot rock into dust, Sonny dismissed it and removed a piece of cloth from the table. Beneath it, a few strips of monster meat lay on a silver platter. He had hunted this monster himself, which was not an easy task in these parts. In fact, as far as Sonny knew, he was one of the very few people capable of hunting in the city alone. The reason for this was that most of the nightmare creatures populating it were of the fallen rank, with only a handful of weaker ones hiding here and there. No one was crazy enough to hunt the fallen monsters. Instead, large hunting parties used experienced guides to avoid these powerful creatures while searching for easier prey. But to Sonny, singling out stray awakened monsters were comparatively easy. He hunted at night, using deep shadows to make himself nothing short of invisible. If he didn't want to fight a fallen abomination, he didn't have to. Most of the time. In any case, he never went hungry. Sonny grinned and said in a deeply satisfied tone, Ah, life is good. 